Hi there, I'm Kimberly with Beauty by Sewn, and today we are going to do Holiday Glow. And Holiday Glow for me right now is all about getting glowing, beautiful skin, touch of sheen on the eye, and a glowing finish to my lip. It may not be your traditional deep reds, burgundies, but I really wanted to show you and take the time on how I get that holiday glow through my skin care and my foundation application. So you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. We want our skin to have that glow, even though the skin is feeling drier and dehydrated and more tired. I wanted to show you some tips and tricks that I'm doing just to help my skin get that glow so that I'm getting compliments on my skin, um, which I want more and more as I get older and older. So one of the biggest things I can say is the number one key word is layering. Uh, always starting off with either a serum or an essence of some sort. So I am going to start off with this milky-like texture. It's called L'Essence de Fondamental. And applying two, three drops, I am going to actually press and then activate the formula into my skin. I would love to apply using an outward motion, applying to my 11s and then gently blending out and then whatever is left i always 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 make sure that i go under the jawline and applying it to the skin and then anything else left i apply it to the back of the hands now i'm going to go for eye cream and eye cream during the day just underneath and then an eye cream at night uh, you can apply also on the brow bone. The reason you don't want to do that uh, during the day is because then any powder eye makeup may not sit as well. Your eyeshadow primer may not sit as well if you have an eye cream on your eyelid area. So again, using just a very small amount of eye cream, I can then just gently tap and then blend out the product gently. And a little motion that I love to do is a little self spa motion, little self spa motion. And then my eyes feel somewhat more revived. So like I said before, we want to layer. So now I'm going to take a small amount of my sublimage la creme, and I'm going to use a smaller amount to begin with, but again, press it onto the skin first and then activate the formula. So again, blending and pressing gently into the skin, working on an outward motion, and then gently through my 11s, and anything that's left, making sure that I get onto my neck, onto my gobble gobble, and then back the hands. Now we're going to go in for a foundation, but actually before you go to a foundation, we're going to even do more glow, but you could go here if you're like, okay, I'm never going to do that many layers, get it. But this is something that I love to show and teach is a almost like a highlighter or primer that you use underneath your foundation. So this is called Sublimage Le Soin Perfecteur, and you can see it just looks like a very lightweight lotion. If I apply a little bit to the back of my hand, you see a sheer luminescence there? So by applying this to the high points of my face, where I know I'm gonna wanna see more glow before my foundation, that's where I'm gonna get that lit from within finish. So I love that lit from within glow happening above my brows. I love it happening in that top part of my cheek above my cheekbone, a little bit on the chin. I always apply what's left on my neck and just on the bridge of the nose, maybe a little bit on the ball of the nose. Back of the hands again. Now you can go into your foundation, but really can't emphasize enough layering and layering. So the latest foundation that I am obsessed with is this called Numero 1 de Chanel. And it is a beautiful medium coverage that gives a, 
um, almost like a glow like finish that feels like skin. So it is lightweight. It also helps to hydrate the skin. And I'm using a brush that is beveled and rounded that you can use um, with any foundation formula. And by, again, just applying the product all over first where I need it to, you can see my skin almost looks wet, but I want it to look like that as I am starting off with my skin. Don't worry because your skin is gonna tell you what it needs. I'm gonna apply a little bit more just where I have hyperpigmentation around the perimeter of my face. Yes, this is probably from not putting on sunscreen all over every day in the summer. I have more redness and texture in my jawline. And then always making sure you're taking your foundation brush and getting it right underneath and into your nostril area. Because especially through here, we tend to get you know, a little bit more redness in the winter. Anywhere that you do need a little bit more coverage, don't hesitate by gently bouncing or tapping your foundation brush versus sweeping because sweeping is what blends the formula into the skin or onto the skin versus tapping or pressing. You're just helping with the coverage. So my complexion is glowing. You can see in the contrast between my forearm and face, which is always a great way to test does the skin on your face match the skin on your body for photos? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna give our skin a break. We're gonna back away, step away, and we're gonna jump into eyes. And just in that holiday glow vibe, I wanted to show you shimmers that have glow to them or sparkle. A lot of times clients will say, oh, but I can't use sparkle, I'm over 50. Nonsense. You want to use any type of sparkle shimmer. You're not thinking um, frost-like, products, which may then, yes, highlight a, and accentuate texture on your eyelid. Instead, I want you to try something that has a soft layer of shimmer. So first, I'm going to start with this soft beige color, and I'm applying product to both sides of my brush, and I'm just going to gently stamp onto the center of my lid using both sides of the brush where I've applied color, and you can see it's a very sheer wash of a barely there just hint of beige shimmer. You see the difference? Very subtle. So this way I know that I'm getting a glow-like finish. I'm not accentuating the texture on my eyelids and I'm applying the color across the whole lower lid from the lash line to the crease and then making sure with any color that you do apply onto your lower lid that you're just looking ahead in a mirror, which I've got right here, and you're just blending it into the crease with your eye open. So we're gonna just stop there with the shimmery shadows, and I'm now gonna oomph it up a little bit by, again, going into a same palette, and many palettes you'll see out there have a one or two lighter shades, and then a medium to deeper shade, and then usually a richer deep tone for eyeliner or super smoky looks. So no, your eyeshadow palette can be used in multiple ways. I'm gonna use the exact same brush and I'm gonna go more into this gray, grayish tone and tapping always a little bit. And by applying just a little bit of depth into my crease, I'm gonna start at the height of my crease and I'm gonna blend back and forth to the outer half of my eye. So if you see here, I'm starting at the center of my eye with my eye open and I'm blending it back and forth very gently just to that outer corner of my eye. When you're applying your crease color, you wanna make sure you're not scooping and pulling it down. If anything, you're gonna bring your crease color up and out because the whole goal of applying shadow is to lift, right, and help Keep your eyes looking more up and awake. So any color in that crease, you want to make sure again that you're pulling and just keeping it up in that outer half of the eye versus scooping it under. So again, I only apply crease to the center to the outer corner of my eye because I already carry darkness and have a deeper set color in my inner corner. 
And that's for me is again, a great way to just accentuate the natural darkness. I'm seeing it that inner corner and blending it outwards. A great way to make sure too that your crease color is blended is then just tilt your head back and look at that color in your crease. And is it blended from the crease to the brow bone? You don't wanna see any harsh lines. So keeping it just sweeping. And really when it comes to that crease color, you can never over blend um, because you'd rather have a diffused color along the crease versus a sharp line of color. I can now even take a little pop of that white and I'm going to apply that right, just stabbing it into the center of my lid. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna apply it right and tapping it into the center of my lid. And the reason I'm using my finger is because I'm gonna get more color payoff, but I've noticed I'm just tapping with the, my finger, not blending. Now for liner, many clients say, oh, I'm too lazy to apply mascara. I don't like using liner. Liner as we get older is so important because you wanna define your features. Again, as we get older, our features tend to fade. You know, our hair becomes more silver gray tones. Our lashes even become more silver gray. So just by doing a definition of your eye is gonna help create definition and then lift. So simplest way to create definition, if you're not a big eyeliner person, is I want you to find a chubby eyeliner. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna tilt your head back, look in a mirror, and you're going to apply underneath the lashes. And you can see here, just by looking, that has given a subtle hint of definition along my top eye shape. So again, blending, and I'm just putting it in underneath the lashes, and I'm not going over top. So you want a little bit more liner? I get it. You can use a powder here, you can use a pencil here. I'm gonna just show you again the simplicity and I am gonna use the darkest shade out of this holiday palette. The palette is limited edition, but I do always like to reiterate that you can, you know, again, looking at, I'm sure many palettes you have at home, finding that lighter, the medium dark to medium dark and a deep shade in your palettes, you'll be able to follow the same techniques. So I am using just a very soft, flush, fluffy uh, brush that is on the tip. It's not a finely tight liner brush. And that's because I rather just see a haze of color along my lash line. And as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm applying the color in soft, even strokes, going from thicker on the outer corner and making sure that that outer corner of my liner meets where my crease is to my eye. And then the inner half of my eye, I'm barely applying any color. So it's going from thin to thicker. Again, this is gonna help elongate or lift the outer corners of my eye. If you have a you know a deep set eye, you have a smaller eye, you have a downturned eye, a round eye, this is the technique for you. Those who I see have that beautiful almond shaped um, approach right away, or you know almond uh, shaped eye. I'm like, oh, look at your eyes, and you can just line your eyes straight across, and it'll look beautiful. But again, for those that want to really lift that outer corner. Looking straight in a mirror, you wanna make sure that you've got that liner going as thick as it does until it meets the crease. And then for continuity, you do like to bring in a little bit of that liner into the inner corner just to continue the line. So for my look, it doesn't look like it's just been lined halfway. I'm going to keep liner just on the top because I want it to be more effortless, daytime approach, and again, fresh holiday glow lifting by doing a little bit more on the bottom, smoking it out, doing more of the dark shades, you're definitely gonna go glam, evening, smoky, sultry, and we can go there too. Okay, so we've got the skin on, I've done my eyes. Now for lashes, I'm not gonna apply all my mascara on air as I would do because I don't wanna waste your time. The one big tip I've been telling so many of my girlfriends 
is I want you to take the time and curl your lashes. This again helps to lift and pump up the lashes. And then by applying two, three coats of mascara, just one never looks like enough. I want you to make sure that you're starting right at the root and zigzagging up to the tips of the lashes. So pressing the color right at the root is really what's important. Almost like the color, you know, at your hair, if you apply mousse into your hair, it's what's at the root that helps to lift and volumize. So again, just by pressing into the root, I know my lashes have a better chance of staying up and then also getting the most out of the mascara. So I'll probably go back and you know what, add two, three more coats, but I have, live by a theory of almost you can never have too much mascara or blush. So now that the eyes are done, I'm looking at my complexion and I can see there is still that glow on my skin because I do have body moisturizer on, but the skin on my face still has that watery glowing like texture, which I love to see here on my cheekbones, but I don't per se want to see it like I'm sweating. So this is where I am going to very use a very sheer powder with a very loose fluffy brush. So finding a brush that's very loose fluffy, keep this brush just for your powders or bronzers. That way you're not going to mix it in with blush colors. And just by using a Le Beige powder, and you'll notice I'm pressing the color all over the brush because it's a rounded brush. And I'm going to apply the powder where I don't want to look like I'm schwitzing or sweating too much. I just want to have that glow look. So I love to make sure that I'm pressing powder through my brows, between my brows, tapping it on and around my nose area, and then through my T-zone onto my chin. So that way I'm getting the high points in the center of my face where the glow may not look as beautiful. I may like more like I'm having a hot flash and I wanna keep that glow on my cheeks. Now I want to show you, since we've done a little powder on the skin, I'm going to show you brow. And for your brows, brows are very important. Maybe your hairdresser is coloring them for you when you get your hair colored. That's a big wow factor, for, especially if you have a mahogany or brunette tone. For blondes, you do like the color to match the more natural um, sort of wheat tones in your color of your hair. But you've noticed I brushed my brow hairs downwards. I then just following the top part of my brow and then going through the tail in soft feathery strokes. Now I do have my brows microbladed, so the tracing is there for me to be able to see. But if you notice, just by having a touch of color that's the same color as the hair in my brow, it's adding lift and definition. It's becoming the highest point on my face that's defined. So again, it's all about lifting our features, keeping focus on the glow of my skin. I have a hint of glow on my eyes. So really, it's just like the picture frame to your artwork of your eye makeup. So we're just blending it back and then making sure that it comes down. And then the little spoolie on the end, this is one of my most favorite products from Chanel is the Stilo Sorcil Waterproof. So it's a waterproof brow pencil. I find it's, the colors are beautiful. They blend in effortlessly. And I love the fact that there is the spoolie on the end. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply concealer. And concealer, a little, a lot, whatever you want, you can do. I want you to know that again, concealer wherever little or as much as you want, I wanna make sure that you are covering color or darkness in that inner corner of the eye. If you have a deeper set eye like myself, this is very important. And then I'm just tapping what's left onto my brush. And then I'm going to go back in. This is Look Corrector B32. And that means it's got actually a little bit of a pinkish tone to it which pinkish rose tones help to neutralize or the opposite color to grays or um, deep blues. So you can see here, I'm going to just let it set. 
And now I'm going to tap with my ring finger. Ring finger is always the best. And this look corrector formula, I must say, is phenomenal because it self sets. I don't need to use the powder underneath. I don't have to use anything to then help set it or to hold. It literally gives that skin-like finish without any powder, without much work at all. So you can see I just applied um, dabs and then just by pressing the color under my eye, I do like to just gently blend the color to the top of my cheekbone and making sure that that inner corner of my eye, that gray, is neutralized um, onto that upper eyelid. Look at that. Woo! That is one of my wow products. Concealer may not be as wow for you, especially if you have more of a white tone or a puffier eyelid. You may not need as much concealer, but just still always check that inner corner, making sure that the gray is neutralized with a concealer. So now we're going to go for my favorite part the blush, and I'm going to be using a tone, very soft and nude, called Rose Ecrin. It is great, uh, there are brushes in many blush compacts, but I love going for a big brush. So we're going to, again, load my brush, lots of color, and I wanna smile, and yes, this is a powder blush, and you're thinking, well, is that gonna take away the glow? I want you to watch. So I'm going to, again, tap the color, smiling at the apple of the cheek, and I'm bringing it up towards the temple of my eye, or temple of my uh, side of my face next to my eye. And you can see that natural tone helps to bring out the color of my lip, which has no lip product on it. And that's really a way you know that your natural blush color is really sh works for you because it should be a color that naturally enhances the color of your natural lip. So I'm just tapping and pressing. And do you see the glow that's coming through? It's because we primed and started my skin so well with layering, with a, a, a serum, a moisturizer, and then a moisturizing, glowing, highlighting primer, and then a foundation that does give a glowy finish. So let your skin just react to products. Let your skins tell you if your skin is looking dry and flat after all those glowing products, then I would want you to go to a cream blush. So for myself, I'm just gonna keep it natural and I'm going to go for a pop of a gloss. I do love these Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue, which means long lasting, and they're duo ended. And just by applying a swatch of color on the bottom lip first, Pressing my lips together, I'm going to just get a natural tint of color to my lips. Now I'm going to go for a lip liner next, and that is because I want a more natural shape to my lips. If you want really long lasting, you want to really define your lips, I do want you to go for lip liner first. If you want something just a little bit more natural, a liner that will wear off gently as you do, as your lips do, then you can do liner next. The biggest tip. I can give you is to make sure that your liner doesn't go too over the lip edge because then it looks very drawn on. And just by using, again, the edge of the lip liner, this is a color called Pivoin, and making sure too that you're not scooping your liner in uh, to that inner corner because you don't want to cut the color or the shape of your lip short. And there, and then at the bow of the lip, I'm not a huge fan of the points. If you are, go for it. But I want you just to watch doing a little gentle X and creating shape there. And by pressing them together, you can use a, use a lip brush if you really wanna make sure they're blended. But I find just by pressing them together, I know that they look diffused because the liner and the lip color are similar-ish. They're not like one is dark brown and one is more fair. And then, I don't know about you, but I can't go anywhere without this color. It's called icing. And I just love to apply the color into the center of my bottom lip. Now, if you want even more glow on the go and a compact, I can't um, 
share enough how much I love highlighting powder products. Um, you can also have a cream blush if you're having a drier day um, or, you know, a balm-like blush. But I am telling you, show me a blush that's got some shimmer and illumination in it. And ooh, that makes me so happy. And it's a great product for me to touch up especially during the day between meetings, in and off the train, going to meet a friend. So I wanted to show you this effortless look. Yes, there are steps, but know that the colors don't all have to be deep fall, that that holiday glow also doesn't have to be about, you know, a bright red lipstick. It can be truly about your skin and the colors and flushes that you're seeing naturally on your face. I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know other videos you'd love to see, and I will talk to you soon. I'll talk and reply to all comments below. Huge hugs. Bye.